In this week's weekly funny story jokes, we bring you our best funny story joke compilation of the week. These funny story jokes are sure to make you laugh, from the first one to the last one. These are our story jokes, which we love to generate. This week, we bring you four story jokes, starting with a story about a massive pothole, until we finish with a hilarious story about priests and their driving habits. Please watch to the end, as we keep the best one for last. So, sit back, get the popcorn, and get ready to laugh until your stomach aches. In our first funny story joke of the day, we bring you a funny story about a massive pothole. In today's funny story joke, brace yourself for an uproarious tale of comedy and misadventure. This story will have you doubled over with laughter as we follow the hilarious exploits of Kevin, a young Irishman, on his first day with a street repair gang in London. This joke delivers non-stop hilarity that will keep you chuckling all the way through. Kevin O'Malley, a strapping lad with a twinkle in his eye and a brogue thicker than pea soup, landed a coveted position a spot on London's illustrious street repair crew. But before popping open a celebratory Guinness, he learned his first lesson. Coveted positions in London are coveted for a reason. You see, Kevin's crew wasn't just any crew. They were the elite squad tasked with a most unenviable mission, conquering the pothole of all potholes. This particular abyss nestled in the heart of a central borough held the dubious honor of winning the most appalling, deepest, this will kill all cyclist, Pothole of the Year Award for a record-breaking two centuries. It was a title the borough wore with a peculiar pride, a badge of honor for their crumbling infrastructure. Now Kevin, fresh off the Emerald Isle, was about to learn the true meaning of British eccentricity. On a crisp Monday morning, Kevin arrived at the work site, brimming with youthful enthusiasm. He envisioned a flurry of activity, jackhammers pounding, asphalt smoking, a symphony of construction noises heralding the vanquishing of the dreaded pothole. Instead, he was greeted by a sight that made him question his sanity. A group of burly men, clad in high-vis jackets and grinning wider than Cheshire cats, were huddled around a huge pothole, fishing rods in hand. Their voices boomed in a cacophony of Irish jigs and off-key renditions of tales of a fisherman. Confused, Kevin scratched his head. Was this some bizarre London initiation ritual before sunrise? Curiosity gnawing at him, Kevin approached the merry band. As he neared, their song morphed into a boisterous Top, top of the morning, morning to ya! A sound that warmed him like a peat fire on a winter's night. It felt like a piece of home amidst the foreign bustle of London. Mustering his courage, Kevin tapped the shoulder of a man with a beard that rivaled Gandalf's. Excuse me, sir. My name is Kevin. I am starting work on this site today. May I ask, what are they doing? He inquired, masking his bewilderment with a friendly smile. Fishing? Stay tuned, because this funny story joke ain't over yet. There's more hilarity just around the corner. But why? And when are we going to start filling up the pothole? He inquires, still as puzzled as before. Well, we have been trying to do that for years, and it just keeps opening up. So we declared it a national tourist attraction and called it Lake Pothole. Fishing permits are available at the office for a fee. But why would anyone want to fish there? The foreman looks at him with a big grin. Well, so far this week, I caught six tires, seven rims, and a steering wheel. <laughs> In our second funny story joke of the day, we bring you a guy that owns a bar.
In today's funny story joke, we explore the comedic adventures of Jack, the longtime barman of Avalon. This story takes a hilarious turn one night when Jack, peacefully sleeping, is rudely awakened by a series of absurd phone calls. What unfolds is a comedy of errors that will have you laughing out loud. Join us for this uproarious tale about a bar, a barman, and one very funny persistent patron. In the quaint little town of Avalon, there was only one bar and one barman, Jack. Jack had owned this bar for quite some time, since he was 21 to be exact. Now at 62, he looked forward to the day he could retire and enjoy some well-earned rest. But until then, he was content with running the town's only watering hole, a beloved and somewhat notorious spot. One night, around 11 o'clock, Jack was woken up from a deep, peaceful sleep by the ringing of his phone. Groggy and a bit annoyed, he picked up. Hello, can I help you? He mumbled. Oh, hello, sir. I just wanted to know how late the bar will be opening. A young man asked, remarkably calm for this hour. Jack, puzzled, replied, Well, sir, we open at 9 o'clock in the morning and close at 5 in the evening. There was a pregnant pause, then the young man responded. Well, thank you, sir. I guess I'll have to wait until then. Sorry for bothering you. See you tomorrow morning. Bye now. Jack thought it was odd, but shrugged it off and went back to sleep. At two o'clock in the morning, the phone rang again. Jack, still half asleep, answered. Hello, how may I help you? Hello there, I have a little question. How late will you be opening the this time? The voice was slurred, clearly belonging to someone who had been drinking all night. Jack sighed and replied, Well, sir, we open at 9 o'clock in the morning and close at 5 o'clock in the evening. Well, I gotta wait still? Oof, okay, at least I have a way to skip time. Bye-bye now. Jack went back to bed, thinking about how strange the night had been. But this funny story joke ain't over just yet. Things are about to get even more twisty and hilarious. At five o'clock in the morning, Jack's phone rang once more. He picked it up, seriously considering throwing the phone out the window. Hello, this is Jack, how may I help you? He asked, trying to keep his composure. <laughs> how can you help me? Came a familiar drunken voice. Tell me, my friend, tell me. How late does this little place of yours open? The yummy drinking place? Jack, now recognizing the voice, replied, Well, sir, we open at 9 o'clock and close it. Yeah, I know, I know, at 5 o'clock. Wow, sir, it's 5 a.m. and you're waiting for the bar to open already? Things must be pretty rough. But unfortunately, sir, you have to wait outside my bar until I open. <sighs> Till you open. The drunk man slurred. For your information, sir, I've been in one place since yesterday at five o'clock. I'm already in the bar. Can you please come and open your bar so that I can go home? <laughs> now, we bring you a funny story, Joe, about a businessman who tried to do a deal with the Pope. In today's funny story joke, prepare for an uproarious tale of marketing mishaps and divine negotiations. This comedy follows the hilarious journey of a fried chicken company owner as he tries to strike an unbelievable deal with the Pope. Get ready to laugh out loud as we dive into a story that's both funny and unforgettable. In a bustling city, a savvy entrepreneur named Henry ran the famous Henry's Fried Chicken, Known for its crispy golden chicken and secret blend of herbs and spices, the business had once enjoyed immense success. However, recent months had seen a decline in sales, and Henry was desperate to turn things around. He needed a marketing strategy that would catapult his company back to the top. One evening, while pondering over his dilemma, Henry had a light bulb moment. He thought, 
What if I could get the Vatican to mention my chicken in the Lord's Prayer? That would surely grab everyone's attention. With renewed enthusiasm, he decided to contact the Pope himself. After navigating through layers of Vatican officials, Henry finally managed to get a phone call with the Pope. Nervously, he presented his bold proposal. Your Holiness, Henry began. I am the owner of Henry's Fried Chicken, and I have a rather unique request. I would like you to change the words of the Lord's Prayer from give us this day our daily bread to give us this day our daily chicken. In return, I will donate $10 million to the Vatican. The Pope, taken aback by such an unconventional offer, responded kindly but firmly. I'm sorry, my son. It's the Lord's Prayer and I cannot change it. The words are sacred and have been passed down through generations. Disappointed but not discouraged, Henry thanked the Pope and hung up. A month passed, and sales continued to plummet. Desperation began to set in, and Henry decided to try his luck once more. Your Holiness, Henry pleaded during his second call. I really need your help. Sales are worse than ever. If you agree to my request, I will donate 50 million to the Vatican. The Pope sighed, recognizing the dire situation Henry was in. Your offer is very tempting, he admitted. The church could do a lot of good with that much money. It would help us to support many charities and initiatives. However, I must decline again. It is the Lord's Prayer, and I simply cannot change the words. Henry's hopes were dashed once more, and he hung up, feeling the weight of his company's future on his shoulders. Two more months dragged by, and Henry's situation grew increasingly dire. Sales had hit an all-time low, and he knew he had to make a final, desperate attempt. Gathering every ounce of courage, Henry made one last call to the Vatican. Your Holiness, he said, his voice trembling. This is my final offer. If you change the Lord's Prayer for me, I will give 100 million to the Vatican. The Pope paused, considering the enormous sum. Let me get back to you. The Pope then convened an urgent meeting with his cardinals. They gathered in a grand hall, filled with ornate decorations and a sense of anticipation. The Pope addressed them solemnly. I have some good news and some bad news, he began. The good news is that a fried chicken company is going to donate $100 million to the Vatican. But that ain't just the end. This funny story's twist is about to get really twisty. A murmur of excitement rippled through the room. The Cardinals could already envision the numerous charitable projects and improvements this windfall could support. However, the Pope's expression turned sober as he continued. The bad news is that we have lost the bread account. <laughs> In our last funny story joke of the week, we bring you some priests driving skills. But before we go, we would like to thank you so much for watching our funny story joke compilation. If you like this type of videos, then please press the subscribe and the bell icon. This way you will get notified when we publish new content. Here we go with our last funny story joke of the week. In today's funny story joke, we take you on a journey with a group of monks on an educational visit to America. Their road trip quickly turns into a hilarious adventure, filled with comedy and unexpected twists. Get ready to laugh as you follow the monks' misadventures on the highways of the United States. This joke is packed with humor and clever twists that will have you laughing out loud. In the heart of rural Ireland, a small abbey decided it was time to send a group of monks to America for an educational and instructional visit. The chosen few, led by the amiable brother Patrick, were thrilled at the prospect of this grand adventure. With a bit of trepidation and a lot of excitement, they boarded their flight, eager to explore the vast lands of the United States. After a long journey, they landed in sunny California, where the roads seemed to stretch out endlessly. Renting a car, the monks embarked on their cross-country educational tour. Brother Patrick, the most experienced driver among them, took the wheel. 
His navigation skills, however, were perhaps not as sharp as his spiritual wisdom. As they cruised along the scenic highways, the monks marveled at the wide open spaces and the novelty of American road signs. Brother Patrick, ever the cautious driver, kept a steady pace, ensuring they adhered to all the traffic rules. The car, filled with chatter and laughter, moved at a leisurely speed, giving the monks ample time to take in the sights. But this funny story joke ain't over yet. One sunny afternoon, as they traveled along a particularly picturesque stretch of road, the monks noticed a police car trailing them. The flashing lights and blaring sirens soon signaled them to pull over. Brother Patrick, puzzled but compliant, eased the car to the shoulder of the highway. The police officer, a stout man with a no-nonsense demeanor, approached their vehicle. With a firm but courteous tone, he addressed Brother Patrick. Father, this is a 70 miles per hour highway. Why are you driving so slow? Brother Patrick, with a look of genuine confusion, replied, Sir, I saw a few signs that said 22, not 70. Suppressing a smile, the officer explained, hey, Oh, Father, that's not the speed limit. That's the name of the highway you are on. But say, you sound Irish, so if you are a visitor, I won't book you. My grandparents were Irish. Brother Patrick's face lit up with relief and a touch of embarrassment. Oh, how silly of me. Thanks for letting me know. But surely there is no limit on driving slowly in the U.S. The officer shrugged, a hint of amusement in his eyes. Well, you might get hit by some of these nuts, and it ain't safe. At this point, the officer glanced into the back seat and noticed the other monks. They were pale, eyes wide with fear, and clearly shaken. Curious, the officer asked. Excuse me, Father, what's wrong with your friends back there? They're trembling. With a wry smile and a glint of humor in his eyes, Brother Patrick answered. Well, officer, we just got off Highway 101. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.